turn 12. We are green in Portland. Sam Mayer with an incredible launch from that restart zone is able to take the line that he wants. You see, he gets down into turn one. Left that door open, he's going around. There goes Mayer, off the front end of Shane Van Gisbergen. and Riley Herbst comes through with the race lead. Wow, I can't believe what I just saw there. Sam Mayer gets the lead, leaves the door open, and allows Shane Van Gisbergen to get inside. Locks up the wheel and turns him around. Yeah, I want to go back and look at that. It looked to me like Shane was trying to get slowed down. I was actually a little shocked it, it, from that view that we had. It seemed like Mayer felt like he had a little more of a gap on Shane and, and, and took that traditional line, but clearly left the door open and, and, and Shane filled the hole. Riley Herbst said, thank you very much. I'll pace the field now. Adam, we said turn one, two, three are going to be chaotic. I didn't know lap one. We're three for three. Three years here, and already we've had an incident in our third race at Portland where the event has been impacted by what happens down in turns one, two, and three. Yeah, and this will be a little bit of a view from, from, from an aerial cam. You see Mayer moves back up, gets into that traditional line, and it just looks to me like he's a little bit cautious getting into turn one. You see Shane's trying to get slowed down, but... Just makes contact, sends Mayer around, and, and as you said, Riley Herbst is able to capitalize on it. And I, I don't blame that on Shane Van Gisberg. I mean, Sam Mayer left the door open, he fills the gap, and you'll see Sam come down, not realizing that Shane's in there, locked up, and uh, it's going to happen every time. Let's go on board with Cole Custer. Happened right in front of him. Thank you. Yeah, it almost looks like Shane locked the rear brakes up right there, trying to stay off of Sam Mayer. Uh, you know, typically the start of these races, guys aren't overly aggressive. The one thing that, that we need to talk about here, though, very limited practice, obviously a little bit of qualifying. I think getting those those reference points picked out, your braking markers into turn one, everybody's still filling that out. We mentioned that some good drivers are coming from the back after dropping to the rear because of those adjustments. A.J. Allmendinger in that category. Now Sam Mayer, who fell to 27 after spinning out in turn one. By the way, when you miss the corner down there, and we saw a few drivers do it beyond Mayer, you have to maneuver through those A-frames. That's your debt to NASCAR when you miss turn one or turn two. Yeah, and the one thing that we have learned over the last two years is, is paying that penalty, it's not a huge penalty. We've, we've seen some of the guys actually only lose a couple of positions if you can, can do that correctly. Well, we saw Justin Allgaier last year from the lead rejoin in second and be able to finish second there on the last lap. Yeah, Brandon Jones there out front of A.J. Allmendinger ran the ARCA race yesterday, finished second, getting some laps. But I've been really impressed with this 98 car out front so far this weekend. Fastest in round one of qualifying. Now out front, we know that these Stuart Haas cars would be good based off of Cole Custer's performance last year. But right now, doing a good job. Ford's still winless in 2024 Indy Xfinity Series. I rewind Dakota when Riley Herbst won a stage. They played a little strategy, ran long when many were flipping the stage. So not totally shocking to see the 98 out front. They've had a lot of speed this year, and he was top five last fall on the Robles. So we know he can get it done on the road course. And you see Cole Guster getting a little bit racy, actually getting into the side of uh, Shane Van Gisbergen right there as they head on to that backstretch. This lead 